In this video, I'm going to actually show you what I do if I'm searching for information for uh, just about anything. So let's pretend that I'm a student in this class and I've been assigned an informative speech and I uh, have recently been thinking, gosh, I would just love to go visit the Taj Mahal. And well, maybe this is a good time to learn a little bit more about it and then I can educate my audience about the Taj Mahal. And so I would start with probably what you would start with is I would do a Google search and I would get a list of a variety of things and let's say that I found this um, information about the Taj Mahal on a site called smarthistory.org. I've never heard of smarthistory.org so I know now it's a .org so I, I'm gonna need to do one of those crazy worksheets that my professor is asking me to do so I get on the on the site and I just begin to look around so I notice there's a picture I'm not gonna be fooled by the picture I also notice it says the Taj Mahal oh and there's a name and I'll be honest with you it's not common to find an actual name of an author on a site so I'm like oh okay there's a name of someone the first thing I'm probably going to do is start exploring to find an about us section because I have no idea what smart history is. I've never heard of it before. So I'm not seeing anything up top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue scrolling. And as I'm scrolling, looking for this about us site um, or link, I'm going to be looking at other things on the site. Okay, I see there's more. I do see that there's credits for all the uh, pictures and where those photos came from. That's really nice, not always something that you see. So that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. I continue going and maybe as I'm going, hopefully I'm skimming, not reading as if I'm studying for a big test, but I'm skimming the article that's there. Um, I can I can tell that, well, okay, it's giving a lot of information about it. So far, I'm feeling pretty encouraged by this source, but again, I don't know everything yet, so I'm going to keep going. Seems like there's quite a bit of information. Seems to talk about a lot of different things about the Taj Mahal, and I'm going to just keep scrolling. And I haven't come across anything yet with about this smart history site. It's looking like the information may be okay, but I'm not sure. So I'm getting down and I notice here they have additional resources. Again, another very encouraging sign. It's not always common to find additional resources uh, listed on a website. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about this site right now. Um, I continue going, wow, cite this page. I could copy and paste that. That looks like a pretty good citation. It has the, the author, it has the name of the article, it has where it's from, looks like the, the date that um, it may have been updated here on August 9th of 2015. I'm, today is actually May 17th of 2019 and it's giving me the date access and it's also giving me the the URL so that is again very uncommon to find that on just an internet search of a site so I'm feeling really good about this so I'm down here at the bottom of the site I can't go any further I see this about smart history ah okay that's what I was looking for and so I'm going to click that now, of course, anybody can say anything about their organization. So I, uh, you know, I, I need to read through this and see how I'm feeling. And it's giving me a lot. What I'm going to want to do, remember, in those source evaluation sheets is I need, can't just take the word of the site I'm using. I'm going to need to go confirm this information on another site. What I'm probably going to do is actually Google Smart History and see what I can find out. But based on what I'm reading here. This is actually some pretty extensive uh, information about this site and again something that's very uncommon so I am feeling very very confident about using this site right now. The one other thing that I would probably want to do I'm just going to backspace this is if you remember there was the name of the author and so I'm probably going to want to find something out and the fact that I can do this right here and click on this author's name and get to something that they linked out to something 
really um, kind of seals the deal for me. And so I can read here about this author, has an MA, so a Master of Arts in South Asian Studies from the University of Pennsylvania. University of Pennsylvania is a fantastic institution. Recently completed an MA in Art History at George Mason University. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this author. Again, this is a speech about the Taj Mahal. Um, and the information on this site looks fantastic. So it is a .org. I do need to do that uh, source evaluation sheet, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. But if you remember, I need to go and find, I need to, to confirm the information that I'm going to use from this source. I do need to confirm that in other sources. And gosh, that pesky professor is going to make me go find at least two sources that aren't a .com, a .net, or a .org. So how am I going to do that? All right, so let's kind of switch gears a little bit. We started with a simple uh, Google search, which is where most people will start. I will tell you on a topic like the Taj Mahal for an informative speech, that is a great topic because it's a place and a place is a noun and we want to stick with nouns for informative speeches because it keeps us away from using uh, persuasive appeals. But now I'm going to go to the database because it really is important that you learn how to do this. So if you're at home like I am and you want to look for information in the library, the best thing to do is to log into your MyHack. You can even change that so it looks like what it looks like for a student. Uh, there is a library tab. You can click on that library tab. And then, uh, you know, sure, I could look for books and media and I could ask a librarian. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to databases and I'm going to go to click on those databases. And there are general databases up here first. I'm saying to myself in my head right now, okay, I'm doing a speech about the Taj Mahal. This is not a highly controversial topic. And I know, I'm going to switch this over to databases A to Z. I know in previous things that I looked for that Credo Reference is a pretty general database, um, articles from encyclopedias, dictionaries, and other reference sources. And so I'm doing a speech about the Taj Mahal, so that's, Credo Reference might be a really good place to start. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that, and I'm going to search for the Taj Mahal. Okay. Oops, did not want to do that. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's a topic page, and what I can do, look, there are 254 results about Taj Mahal, so I could just scroll through all of these and find something. This topic page is interesting to me, and so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, and okay, so here it's from the Encyclopedia of Islam in the Muslim World. I can read some information about this. I can expand that. Okay, it looks like it gives me some information. Um, I would, of course, read the information from my nice little Google search. I would also read the information from uh, this source right here, as well as any source that I get. Reading is a very important thing to do. Um, I can go in here and, okay, look, again, they have bibliography, so what they use. The great thing about using anything from the hack databases is they cite it. So this is a default to APA. Let's say I wanted to use MLA. I could just switch to MLA, copy, paste that right into my works cited, done. You are good to go. Um, another nice thing here as specific to Credo Reference is that it will give you some related articles. It would also give you some images. So let's say that you're going to use your PowerPoint and you want an image. Uh, you know, if I'm doing a speech about the Taj Mahal, you better be showing me a picture of what it looks like. Um, so you could use those images. And the another nice thing is that you can explore other library resources and databases. And this has a large variety. I'm not going to even click on them, but as you can see, there are a large variety of other articles, other sources from hack databases that you could use for this speech about the Taj Mahal. It would be very, very easy to meet the criteria of what you need with no more than two internet sources and then the other sources need to come from uh, you know, print or .gov, .edu, .mil, any hack database 
So these are uh, fantastic ways to meet that. Okay, one other thing that I want to show you, let's say that I find two sources here in the hack database and I say, okay, I got this, this smart history, um, which looks fantastic and had some great information for my speech. I was able to supplement with these other sources that I found in the hack database, but, um, you know, there was nothing else I was really seeing too much in there and I don't feel like going to get a book somewhere. And so I'm going to go back over to Google and then I'm just going to say Taj Mahal and educational websites. And let's see what I find because now my search results look a little different because I put different words in. And if I scroll through here, and again, I'm just looking, I'm looking at the title, I'm looking at uh, what is the, the URL, you know, National Geographic, great source, it is a .org. Um, and that would be fine to use. But if, when I get here, Taj Mahal, official website of the Taj Mahal. Okay, it is a tajmahal.gov.in, which is for India. And, um, wow, the official website of the Taj Mahal, I'll bet you that's a great source to use for a speech about the Taj Mahal. So as you can see, I'm, okay, over my 10 minutes that I'd like to stay in, but in 10 minutes I was able to easily locate a plethora of good sources for a speech about the Taj Mahal that would meet the criteria of no more than two internet sources and would give me some sources from hacked databases. I could then pull that information. I would of course read through that information. I might even want to print it. I might want to highlight it. I want to, might want to make note cards, whatever I want to do. Um, I, it's going to help me formulate my main points for my speech. And now I have this great information here and I can just take it with me as I sit down to create the body of my speech. And so hopefully this video helps you see different ways that you can explore and find sources.